Am I live? Am I live? I guess I am live. How is everyone doing out there? I'm going to wait for some people to jump online. I know that I said I was going to be going live at 6 o'clock, but I am in Florida, so I apologize for the confusion. I know it does say that I'm going to be going live at 6 o'clock Pacific time, but I meant to say Eastern time for those that uh, were able to catch my, was it two days ago when I put out the the reel all over social media about going live Friday at 6 o'clock? Well, it was supposed to be 6 o'clock Eastern time, so I'm going to give it about two minutes just to kind of let enough people join in before I share some juicy information with you guys today. So we're going to discuss several topics. Um, we're going to go uh, over CERN, the concept of CERN, and and all the different anomalies that have been happening as a result of the Hadron Collider, right? That has been happening for the last what? Over since 2012, since they first began to operate this technology. Well, there's a a reason why nothing happened in 2012, I've come to discover that <laughs> the people that turned on this machine in 2012 were actually trying to avert the shifting of the dark age into the golden age. Because in 2012, um, huge changes took place. And the only reason uh, we're still living in this, you know, nightmare, right? where things are still going wrong, right, by the deep state, is because of the fact that um, the people behind CERN totally shifted us into a different timeline. And as I mentioned before, there are 12 overall timelines. You have the alpha timeline in which the forces of light win the war. We also have the omega timeline. And uh, we also have uh, the sigma the delta, the beta, the gamma, and everything in between. So there uh, are a total of, you could say, 12 different timelines. And each timeline has an infinite, ma infinite amount of versions of sub-timelines. Sub, uh, and so what's happening right now, as we undergo this convergence, how's everyone doing out there? I just wanted to... Uh, <laughs> wait for uh, at least 200 people to join in before I get into some juicy information regarding CERN, uh, secret space programs, so on and so forth. So we have 79 people on. Uh, let's give it another two minutes. This is a, a live that uh, I did say was going to be broadcast at around 6 o'clock, but I should have said, I did say Eastern time, right, guys? So here we are, 3 o'clock is Pacific time in California. For those that are on the West Coast, it's uh, beautiful and sunny, I think, still. Here in the East Coast in Florida, it's actually nighttime already. So I meant to say 6 o'clock Eastern time. All right, so let's, let's uh, get into some juicy stuff. So the reason, that, according to this article, the reason nothing happened in 2012 was because of what, you know, because they started messing with CERN. They started, um, you know, uh, accelerating the uh, Large Hadron Collider that completely shifted us into a parallel universe. <laughs> yes, Shakina just reminded me that I did say 6 o'clock Eastern time, so... I apologize for the uh, confusion here. I know it said 6 o'clock Pacific time. Apparently, my laptop is still operating according to California time. So I apologize for that, everybody. Excuse me. I get my water. One second. I am here in Naples, Florida, staying at an Airbnb, thanks to my galactic guardian, Emerald Order sister, Conchetta. So I want to give Conchetta a shout out out there for allowing me to stay in her Airbnb for the few days that I'm here in uh, Naples, Florida. 
All right. So I see that the, uh, the people are jumping on. That's great. So I will do want to acknowledge Linda for being here. Uh, Lynn um, Amison, uh, Marilyn Moyer, Anna Q, Cosmic Goddess, um, Tam, Sharon, Marie, Old Portfolio from Australia, Shakina, Mary Morell, uh, Cass S, Marina, uh, Deuce B, Cosmic Goddess, and who else is here? Let's see. <laughs> Teresa's here. Uh, Universal Guardian is here. Jennifer's here. Anna's here. All right, so it shows that I have about 86 people on. I guess <laughs> people are thinking that I was going to be going on, going live, 6 o'clock Pacific time. But I did mention that I was going to be doing it Eastern time. So here we are. All right, so this is an article coming from the House Stuff Works paper. And um, it's about CERN, how the Large Hadron Collider came into operation in 2012 for a reason. They were trying to offset the transition of ages, right? They didn't want us to shift into the Golden Age. So what did they do is they totally shifted us into a parallel universe where it was going to take another 12 to 14 years before we saw the transition into the golden age, according to this article. So it says particles here. Let me start from the top. So the European organization for nuclear research or CERN was established in 1954 in Switzerland by 12 member states since then, it's swelled to 22 member states and has made dozens of important discoveries, including the Higgs boson, or the God particle, and invention of the World Wide Web. But a powerful scientist a laboratory like this is a ripe for conspiracy theories, of course. <laughs> they still use that word conspiracy theory, right? As you know, this is a, a terminology that was coined by our own CIA to make the logical, you know, clear thinkers, um, critical mind people seem like we, we were going crazy. So it says that especially after it turned on, they turned on the large Halen Collider for a while before it hit the on button, people feared that the large Hadron Collider might destroy the earth. Well, there was a lot of fear regarding that, right? because of the fact that they could have uh, created a mini black hole that would have eventually sucked everything, our entire planet, our entire solar system, into oblivion, okay? But luckily, luckily the Guardian Alliance is on it. And it is believed that they traveled from the future, right? Members of the Guardian Alliance traveled from the future to prevent this from happening. All right, so let's see, let's see. Let's continue. For a while before I hit the on button, people fear that the Large Hadron Collider might destroy Earth, being the, the largest machine in the world, used to smash subatomic particles together. But alas, it still has not. While the kind of cutting-edge science discoveries made at CERN are thrilling, a number of theories around the world still worry about the possibility of disastrous effects of the research. Stuff they don't want you to know. <laughs> Obviously, to knows to knows host Matt Frederick and Ben Bowling compiled and observed all the available data and theories they could find in the episode of the podcast. Should we be concerned? Okay, let's move on. Particles are microscopic elements that make up everything in the entire universe, and subatomic particles like protons and electrons are even smaller than atoms. Make sure, let me make sure my volume is full blast. One second, everyone. Okay. Oh, let there be light. There's the bright symbol. <laughs> the bright button, I mean. Uh, let's see. So like protons and electrons are even smaller than atoms. What CERN is trying to find out is how the universe works 
by studying the building blocks of all matter, as well as the fundamental forces that make them work the way they do, like gravity. All right, so in order to do that, scientists at CERN accelerate two high-energy particle beams close to the speed of light inside the Large Hadron Collider, which is super cold, cold, super cooled by electromagnets. Okay, so we're getting more people on. Awesome. Super cooled by electromagnets uh, to the degree of 271.3 degrees Celsius. It's <sighs> pretty cold. Uh, once the particles reach the proper speed, they are made to collide, and the scientists and physicists uh, observe the results. These experiments have proved proven the existence of the Higgs boson, as well as helped us better understand the neutral particle called neutrinos. Now, what is the Higgs boson? I guess they call it the God particle. But could the Large Hadron Collider and CERN also be at the heart of potentially planet-destroying experiments, right? This is from a critical, criti critical thinking perspective. Um which makes a lot of sense. Theories run rampant. When the collider was experiencing setbacks and delays in the early 2000s, some thought that perhaps a time traveler from the future, that wasn't a coincidence, guys, <laughs> was returning to the past to deliberately sabotage it in order to prevent some disaster. Makes a lot of sense, right? The guardians of the looking glass. <laughs> this supposed... Time traveler tried everything, including time traveling a uh, bird with a bucket, but the collider was turned on in 2012 anyway. Other theories accuse CERN of causing earthquakes. This is a new one, right? You talk about these artificial natural disasters. Well, perhaps they're tied into CERN. Uh, causing earthquakes by sending plasma from Switzerland to Italy at high speeds, opening portals into hell or other dimensions, and shifting the world into an alternative timeline, the Mandela effect, right? In 2015, CERN even admitted it's attempting to create tiny black holes so scientists can study antimatter. Wow, the antimatter stuff is this pretty powerful, guys. They say that a small droplet of antimatter is uh, sufficient enough to destroy the entire planet. All right, talk about you know beyond atomic weaponry or plutonium <laughs> weaponry. So CERN insists its research, including that of microscopic black holes, is perfectly safe. So they think. <laughs> But some theories believe it could cause a collapse of the entire universe. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I would say that a whole gallon or bucket of antimatter would be powerful enough to destroy our entire universe. So apparently the forces at play behind the development and creation of CERN have always been nefarious, right? I'm speaking to the choir here. Oh, it's going to get juicier, guys. We're going to go into some links here, okay? So what else are the physicists and scientists at CERN getting up to in Switzerland? Could any of these speculations that its work could destroy the universe be true? And if so, why do they continue on? They'll have to take a quantum leap and listen to the entire podcast. Okay, we don't have time for that. Let's see. At times in its little things that drive you crazy, by the early 20th century, physicists seem to have the universe pretty well summed up between Newtonian gravity and Maxwell's electromagnetic equations. There was just one nagging problem, how to explain radioactivity. Addressing it sparked a scientific revolution that revealed the amazing truth about little things. Sometimes it contained universes. Particle physics and quantum mechanics, the science of the truly tiny, brought physics to, to more fundamental forces in a um, managery of strange elementary particles. But after the 1970s, little remained but to test and refine the dominant theory, the standard model. Another 30 years worth of subatomic specs uh, chummed out by accelerators and colliders filled key blanks. Yet many questions remained. 
Why did some particles have mass while others didn't? Could we unify the four fundamental forces or make general relativity and quantum mechanics get along? Would one of these dangling threads spark another revolution? Finding out could take a big, a much bigger um, and most powerful par particle collider than even beyond the 16.8 mile, 27 kilometer ring, which is the superconducting magnetic, magnetic collider <laughs> than outer space, they say. Capable of slamming particles together at near light speeds, it's the ultra high vacuum. Okay, so to our macro world, we assume all particles have mass, however small. But in the micro world, uh, electro weak theory, which ties to the electromagnetic and weak forces into one underlying force, predicts that special particles called mediators should have no mass at all, which is a problem because some of them do. Uh, mediators are forced carriers, photons that transmit electromagnetism, while W and Z bosons, bosons, right, the God particle, carry weak forces. But while photons are massless, W and C bo bosons pack substantial uh, heft, on the order of 100 protons. protons. Wow, this is some uh, deep science stuff. In 1964, physicist Peter Higgs of the University of Edinburgh and the team of Frank Kois Englart and Robert Brout of the Free University of Brussels independently proposed a solution in an unusual, an unusual field that conveyed mass uh, based on how strongly particles interact with each other. Okay. All right. So this is... Um, going into some of the uh, stuff that they're telling us to validate the reason of activating such powerful collider. But let's get into some juicy stuff. One second. All right, let's, let's talk about other dimensions and the effect that the Large Hadron Collider is having on other dimensions. I hope everyone out there is doing good. All right, uh, here we go. One second. <laughs> All right, so check this out. Other theories suggest that CERN is being used as a portal right, to allow dark forces to return to the Earth. The Large Hadron Collider near Geneva, Switzerland, is the world's largest particle collider and the largest single machine in the world. It was built between 1998 and 2008 and allows physicists to test various theories. In the past, CERN has carried out experiments to create artificial clouds, artificial clouds, <laughs> to better understand global well, we do know global warming is a hoax. Okay, let's see. So, let's see. One second here. <clears throat> <clears throat> let's let's go into the uh, alternative universes because it seems like alter oh, I'm sorry alter alternative timelines that's been like a hot topic these days there's other other theories going on around online CERN that the European Organization for Nuclear Research experiments have caused the world to shift into an alternative reality right? The Mandela effect. Let's see. Uh, the Mandela effect, which is a phenomenon that occurs when large groups of people believe something happened, even though evidence shows it isn't true. Some think more of these scientists have occurred, more of these instances, I'm sorry, incidents have occurred since CERN was established and suggests that it is particles, 
that its particles, physics, experiments are causing the world to shift into parallel universes. Well, hello. <laughs> That's why nothing happened in 2012, guys. They shifted us into a parallel universe. But don't worry. You know, there is a conversion of multiverses taking place. So we are going to be snapping back into the alpha version as we approach the end of the cycle very soon. So to just do so the Mandela effect example includes thinking that Nelson Mandela died in jail in the 1980s, mistaking uh, for barristing bears. Okay, so we've talked about this, right? All of a sudden, everything is changing, right? Movies, uh, TV shows, uh, events that have slightly changed. So we do know that that we are literally perhaps in an alternative universe as of 2012. Uh, anything else? Anything else? Okay, enough of CERN. All right, so the main thing here is that the truth is that the guardians from the Time Corps organization had to literally travel back in time to prevent CERN from creating an artificial black hole that would have eventually sucked our not only our planet, but our entire solar system and the, the universe into oblivion. But apparently, the guardians, excuse me, the guardians of the, um, the, the what is known as the time, look, the time looking glass technology uh, were able to foresee that from happening. And so they, of course, prevented that from happening. And that is the reason, guys, why we're still here. So this time war that's taking place in the future has already been won by us, apparently. Because if that wasn't the case, we would have ceased to exist. All right, so let's go into some articles about the secret space program. So the first one is um, Solar Warden. All right, one second. All right, so Solar Warden is a secret space program that was developed here in the States. Uh, with this, here, let me go ahead and put this closer to me. Such fine print. <laughs> While this would be the first known government department to be solely devoted to space, it's important to note that the United States has a history of government agencies existing in secret for years. Right? That's obvious. The National Security Agency, the NSA, was founded in 1952, but its existence was hidden until the mid-1960s. Even more secretive is the National Reco Recognizance Office, which was founded in 1960, but remained completely secret for 30 years. Not all information is made public, especially when it comes to space activities. This was made clear by the Pentagon's recent disclosure of a secret program that they are have been running to track unidentifying flying objects in and around our atmosphere so the cost of this program as they say was 22 million but deep research into black budget programs reveals that they have been taking trillions of dollars talk about the deficit deficit right well it's, it's just it's starting to make a lot of sense this is not debatable. Okay, so it's ironic that the U.S. should be fighting monstrously expansive wars allegedly to bring democracy to those countries. When in itself, it can no longer claim to be called a democracy when trillions, and I mean thousands of billions of dollars, have been spent on projects which both Congress and the commander-in-chief know about. Uh, as Okay, so this is an article written by Paul Halier, who was the ex-Canadian defense minister. And for those that don't know Paul Halier, two years ago, he came out of the closet to reveal that there is a federation of aliens. All right, Paul Halier um, apparently is an insider. But get this, this is where all the evidence came in regarding the secret space program by a gentleman by the name of Gary McCannon. So a, a, a man by the name of Gary McCannon, McCannon was charged with causing 700,000 wow, worth of damage to government computer systems. He hacked the Pentagon 
And I don't think this was by accident, by the way. He hacked the Pentagon Department of Defense and Air Force computer. Gary faced uh, extradition to the United States for about 10 years, but was eventually given other punishment. His story was receiving mainstream media attention, and perhaps extradition would have brought unwanted attention to what Gary found. As with most disclosures, mainstream media focused on the crime rather than the productive information that was discovered. According to McCannon, he found a list of non-terrestrial non -terrestrial off world officers of rank. He was unable to tell what department of the military they represented. He also found multiple pictures of UFOs and list of fleet to fleet transfers of materials from ship to ship. You can watch an interview with Gary in the article we published years ago. So all this stuff is not public knowledge, by the way. All right. People just need to do their research. It's all there. All right. Let's continue. So NASA hacker found evidence that America has a deep space program and warships. Well, it's not just America. It's Europe. It's China and Russia. And I think all of the, the, the all of the major key players, right? They all have their own secret space program. You know, um, many believe that the Chinese and the Russians developed a secret space program in the mid 1800s before the 1900s. That's interesting. So according to Hacker, who is facing a 10-year legal battle after breaking into NASA's computer, the United States has a fully operational fleet of space warships. Gary McCannon, McCannon, McCannon firmly believes that he came across the ultimate information that proves that the U.S. has a secret space program operated by the Navy with full operational warships that operate in space. In a new interview on UFO channel, uh, Rich Planet TV, McKinnon finally reveals that the entire truth about his findings, saying, keep going, <laughs> I keep going for months and months, I keep thinking they're going to close this door. McKinnon said that he used a software called Land Search, which allowed him to search all files and folders of interest to him. All right, so this is a picture that they show that he accessed, right? That's what they're, that's how they see space, by the way. So you think we have just an international space station, guys. They have elaborate stations. Look at that, huge cities floating in outer space. All right, that's just a picture that Gary McKenna was able to hack. <laughs> picture from space. Oops. All right, let's continue. Hmm, where was I? Where was I? All right, so Gary McCann is accused of mounting the biggest ever hack in the history of the United States by breaking into the computers of the Army, Air Force, Navy, and NASA. During his latest interview, McKenna describes a conversation with a former, former NASA whistleblower, Donna Hare, that's spelled H-A-R-E, excuse me, who had been told by a colleague that NASA was trying to hide uh, delicate information by airbrushing UFOs from the photos. All right, so that's what NASA is truly hiding, guys. They're not hiding a flat earth in a dome. They're hiding the secret space program. Let's get real here. There was a colleague who was in another room. They all had secret clearance, but they were on different projects. And she, and she, Donna Hare, by the way, was in this chap's lab or room or whatever it is. And he said, come and take a look at this, said McKinnon. While there are many people who firmly believe this is yet another elaborate hoax, there have been a series of former NASA and government employees who back up the claims made by McKinnon. According to statements from a former Marine, not only have humans made it to Mars in the past. Let me read that again. According to statements from a former Marine, not only have humans made it to Mars in the past, but we have developed a secret space pro program and flotilla that operates in space. <laughs> Nothing new, right? 
The former U.S. Marine was posted on the Red Planet for years, and his mission was to protect the human colonies from indigenous life forms on Mars. According to the former Marine, known as Captain K, that's spelled K-A-Y-E, not only did he spend years on Mars, but he also served aboard a giant space carrier for three years. He worked for the Mars Defense Force, the Mars Defense Force, but which, by the way, guys, the Mars Defense Force has been operating since the late uh, early 1950s, by the way, ever since the ICC struck a deal with the Dark Fleet, right? <laughs> they were able to share some of that land. And that explains why the Dark Fleet, which I will actually read an article on them, have always been working with what? The ICC, the Interplanetary Corporate Conglomerate. All right, um, let, let me continue. So the Mars, which is owned and operated by the Mars Colony Corporation. So the Mars Defense Force, the MDF, is owned and operated by the Mars Colony Corporation, the MCC, which is basically a conglomerate of financial institutions, government and tech companies, right? Military industrial complex, complex operating off world pretty much. Kay and his team were a part of a special section of the United States Marines with a highly classified mission to protect and ensure the existence of five newly established colonies on the surface of the Red Planet. The Earth Defense Force, another secret military branch, has military recruits from countries such as the United States, China, and Russia. There you go. See, in secret, these countries are working together in secret up in space. Yeah, even though they appear to be at odds here on the surface, right? They're all working in cahoots. Russia, China, and the United States. They're working together in space, or they have been at least. All right, so parts of the testimony came from Captain K are consistent with that of Michael Rafe, another whistleblower who claims to have served the 20-year and back tour on Red Planet. Laura Magdalene Eisenhower, which I met, by the way, Laura Eisenhower, I'm still yet to do a, a, a collab um, live with her. For those that know who Laura Eisenhower is, she is amazing. She's a very good soul. Great granddaughter of former President Eisenhower claims that efforts were made to recruit her unto a human colony on Mars led by research, uh, Dr. Hall Portiff. According to Jackie, there are humans on Mars. Well, duh, of course there have been humans on Mars, right? They were you know, um, recruited since the 1950s, right? Starting with a few hundred thousand humans that were taken aboard to the Mars colonies. And then, of course, after they reproduced, now we had millions, millions of humans on Mars. And you know what they were told, guys? That They were told that the surface world was destroyed during the 1980s, right? Through a Holocaust war, a nuclear war between Russia and in the United States, which was a complete and utter lie, by the way. All right, let's continue. So according to Jackie, there are humans on Mars, and we have been on the red planet for over 20 years. Jackie, she said, uh, and six other employees saw that the exact same thing, suggesting this might be the evidence that proves that a secret space program did exist or might even still exist. According to Jackie, while working as a part of the team downloading um telemetry from the Viking lander, she saw humans setting foot on the surface of the red planet via a live feed from Mars. Very interesting. In an interview with Coast to Coast AM, Jackie talked about humans on Mars, something that has been discussed among the alleged NASA employees for years. Many ufologists firmly believe that the statements made by the above individuals are accurate and that this information is being withheld from the general public. Well, not for too long, right? Because we are pushing for a fast disclosure. I think that's it for now. Oh, no, there's more. Um, the creation of Space Force announced by Donald Trump years ago is another great example of how Trump is making waves with the established, well, with the secret space program known as Solar Warden. So... Again, you know, there are two different factions. Solar Warden broke off uh, from, from being aligned with the nefarious activities of the interplanetary cor corporate conglomerate in the 1970s and in the 1980s as to why Reagan, you know, uh, 
decided to uh, initiate what they called uh, the, uh, I believe it was called the, uh, what's that thing that Reagan initiated in the 1980s? The, um, something to do with the initiative, the space, the, something to do with space initiative. I forget the Star Wars initiative. There we go. Well, all right. So I think this is good for now. Now let's learn about. All right. So the ICC, the Interplanetary Corporate Conglomerate. So according to this article, guys, you know, a lot of this information, right, is, is slowly but surely coming out to the public, um, but not enough people are doing the research. So I'm going to be sharing this with you guys. So the Interplanetary Corporate Conglomerate, conglomerate say that there are over 100 industrial manufacturing colonies throughout our solar system. Welcome to the Interplanetary Corporate Conglomerate, or the ICC for short, which is a structure and shareholder for super soldiers. <laughs> we are essentially the merchant marine fleet. Enter, let me see, let's see. Okay, so corporate conglomerate structure and shareholder, a secret Mars colony trade uh, made up of 900 extraterrestrial civilizations. Well, I believe that there's more than that now. This is, I guess this was information that was leaking in the 1990s and early 2000s. But I believe that there are thousands and thousands of extraterrestrial civilizations um, that have been negotiating my personal opinion, opinion with the interplanetary corporate conglomerate. So need to know how interplanetary corporate conglomerate is abbreviated, uh, develop and produce technology for commerce with Earth and off-world groups in a better system and left. We are essentially the merchant marine fleet. OK, so this corporation. Oh, and they do have an insignia, which I will show you guys. This corporation are primary primary military defense contractors. Uh, we are essentially the merchant marine fleet. The interplanetary corporate conglomerate or abbreviated ICC is a conglomerate of corporations from all over the world that build Euro Euro space technologies. The interplanetary corporate conglomerate um, presentation features how the ICC has separated from the secret space programs and has branched out into in its infrastructure with zero ships destroyed and 10 ships lost. So they do have an insignia, by the way. This is the insignia of the interplanetary corporate conglomerate. As you guys can see within the private sector, they know that we live in a solar system, right? There's the sun at the center, and those are the planets that are revolving around the sun. So much for the flat earthers. All right. So it is estimated that 150 million human slaves, slaves, wow, that 150 human slaves supporting and working in these manufacturing facilities. These corporations are primarily military defense contractors. On August 17, 2016, by, I guess a paper was, re was released that the Interplanetary Corporate Conglomerate is a combination of corporations, the corporations that have come together to build their resources and create a vast infrastructure in our solar system from all over the world that enrich aerospace technologies. The Interplanetary Corporate Conglomerate, ICC, is a conglomerate of corporations from all over the world that built your Euro, Eurospace technologies. The Interplanetary Corporate Conglomerate, also known as the ICC, is a conglomerate of corporations from all over the world that built... Okay, so I've already read that. This is basically all of the corporations that have come together, uh, pulled their resources, and created a vast infrastructure in our solar system. Okay, okay, let's see. Come on, let's get some juicy stuff. Oh, look at this. The topics covered in this article include cloaked space stations. Cloak space stations. Well, that explains why those that are working with the open programs, right, via NASA and the, you know, the Israeli space station and the Canadian space station. Well, that explains why they can't see these hundred colonies because most of them are cloaked. So apparently they've been using cloak technology to hide themselves from the open programs, okay? So 
Um, cloak stations, the ICC Mars bases, they're also cloaked, right? That's why when they go to Mars, when we send satellites to Mars, they don't see anything because they're all cloaked. It makes a lot of sense. Research labs, experiments, mining operations, they're all cloaked. And advanced technology that is built by the ICC, the Interplanetary Corporate Conglomerate. On June 11, the British Interplanetary... <laughs> one second. On June 11, the British Interplanetary Society began a two-day meeting on a most unusual topic, according to a BBC News article. The ICC evolved out of a consortium of companies such as Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grunman, Boeing Corporations, etc., that created the advanced technologies used by the five secret space programs that emerged in the interplanetary corporate conglomerate uh, is a combination of corporations, the corporations that have come together to build their resources and create a vast infrastructure in our solar system from all over the world that enrich aerospace technologies. This is basically all of the corporations that have come together, pulled their resources, and created a vast infrastructure in our solar system. So it is estimated that 150 million human slaves are supporting and working in these manufacturing facilities. Uh, whistleblowers were accompanied on the top to Mars by a representative of the interplanetary corporate conglomerate, uh, while I guess Randy Kramer, um, did not mention any German connections. He made it clear that the military unit he served was subservient to a corporate entity that was in charge of Mars operations. This is basically all of the corporations that have come together, pulled their resources, and created a vast infrastructure in our solar system. There are over 100 industrial manufacturing colonies throughout our solar system. Right. So this is what it would look like when they are not cloaked. Um, let's see. All right. So this is basically all of the corporations. All right. So whistleblowers were accompanied on to trip to Mars by a representative of the interplanetary corporate conglomerate. The interplanetary corporate conglomerate is a conglomerate of corporations from all over the world that are building the secret space infrastructures. The meeting uh, envisioned a Mars colony, colony ruled over by a ruthless dictator who trampled on the rights of workers in a futurist society controlled <clears throat> by a cabal, apparently. <laughs> there are over 100 industrial manufacturing colonies throughout our own solar system. All right. Not to mention over thousands of colonies, right, that exist throughout the Milky Way. So what that means, guys, is that literal humans, Americans, Germans, Europeans, uh, Chinese, Russians are existing throughout the entire Milky Way. All right. That's what this means. The meeting envisioned a Mars colony ruled over by a dictator. Okay, so there are over 100 industrial colonies. I've already read that. The interplanetary corporate conglomerate presents features how the ICC has separated from the secret space program and has branched out in its infrastructure. Okay, let's see. On secret Mars colonies, trade up to with 900 extraterrestrial civilizations has been happening since the 1950s. These corporations are primarily military defense contractors. The meeting envis envisage a man colony ruled over by a ruthless dictator. Um, let's see, I've already read that. Um, okay, so that's enough of the ICC. Now let's talk about the Dark Fleet real quick before I open it up to questions and answers. Dark Fleet. So this is the notorious, infamous Dark Fleet, which was the original secret space program that was created by the Nazis. So this is a quick report. Again, all this information is now coming out. It's just people are not doing the research. And I do see that somebody is 
Oh, the 150 million slaves be freed. Okay, I'll take this question really quick. Thank you for the super chat from Jeanette Dean. She says, will the 150 slaves be freed after the ascension of, you know, Jeanette, um, ever since there was a separation between the benevolent factions, the Earth Alliance, right? And the nefarious secret space programs, there, there has been a house cleansing taking place within the last four to five years. So within the last four to five years, a lot of those slaves have actually been rescued by Commander Athena, who works within the Space Brotherhood of the Guardian Alliance and have been re, um, have re-facilitated, right? They've been taken to med beds because a lot of them were tortured, uh, especially a lot of the children, um, in order to bring them back to health. So a lot of those people that were part of the slave colonies on Mars and in other stations uh, within the last three to four years have been rescued by the Guardian Alliance. So in the last few years, thanks to 45, ever since Mr. T came into office 19, in 2016, um, there was a huge shift in the secret space programs or in, with these, with, within these breakaway groups. That's when the uh, benevolent factions decided to uh, arrest members of the Dark Fleet and members of the ICC. And from what I understand, according to whistleblowers, um, they were able to arrest a lot of, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of these off-world uh, dictators. And all of them have been taken to Gitmo. So it's just a matter of time before all this information is released to the general public. All right, so let's read about the Dark Fleet. So it reveals the, the this is the, what reveals the Nazi reptilian infiltration of the U.S. government through, of course, President Truman, not Eisenhower. It was Truman who sold us out to the Dark Fleet, guys, the neo-Nazi fascist globalist agenda. <clears throat> okay, so the secret space program and their slaves colonies throughout the solar systems. The Nazis did not want to really lose World War II. They made it appear that way in order to divert attention from the alliance between the Fourth Reich and the race of aliens known as the Reptilians, an ancient galactic civilization obsessed with conquest and domination of the entire Milky Way. After the German surrender in 1945, the Nazi Reptilian Alliance infiltrated the U.S. military industrial complex through Operation Paperclip. The Nazis and Reptilians removed their political opponents, such as the Kennedys, and moved into policy-making positions in post-war America, infiltrating aerospace companies, banking, media, and the U.S. government, including NASA and the CIA. But their real target was not the United States. It was the entire solar system. So this is where we get the saying that the Nazis didn't really lose the war in here on the surface world, but they won the war in space. Of course, till 2016, when <laughs> Solar Warden started arresting them and, you know, kicking butt. <laughs> Thanks to Mr. T, by the way. So as Len Kasten reveals in startling detail, including revelations of anti-gravity propulsion technology, alien techniques of mass mind control. Where do you think the CIA got all of their MK Ultra technologies? It all began with the Nazis. And then they just transfer that technology over to the states, right? Before the CIA, they were known as the Office of Strategic Services. It was all or uh, began by Nazis, by the way. You know, all the Bushes. Prescott Bush was a Nazi, by the way. Mm, let's see. So, including revelations of anti-gravity propulsion technology, alien technology of mass mind control, and hyperdimensional teleportation capabilities. The Nazi Reptilian Alliance used their newfound power, wealth, and influence to launch a secret space program with interstellar spaceports in Antarctica and on Mars, as well as an 11-story base of operations on the moon. They commence mining and manufacturing operations on Mars and Ceres. Ceres is uh, one of the biggest asteroids that we, I guess, apparently colonized within the secret space program. Uh, a lot of battles did take place in Ceres, by the way, in Ceres, C-E-R-E-S, forming colonies there in, and elsewhere in the solar system. And most shocking, they have used thousands of human slaves 
thousands of human slaves easily transported into their spaceships for both work and sexual exploitation. So sad, so sad. In fact, I'm going to reveal something here. Hopefully I don't get a red flag. The reason the Dracos were able, found favor in Hitler was because Hitler offered 22 females to the Draconians in order to be mutilated. I know it sounds horrible, but the Nazis were the first ones to give our women, our females, to the to the Dracos for um, loose harvesting, uh, physical mutilation, um, and some other horrific things that these women had to had to undergo. Unfortunately, off the record, all right. I don't even know if I should say this here, but. I'm trying to speak in code here. <laughs> Let's go on. All right. So sharing technologies from American and British super soldiers who participated in the 20 year and back and were age regressed um, programs. Kasten reveals the various forces inside and outside governments that are resisting dominance of the planet and the solar system. The U S secret space program has its own fleet of spaceships, like Solar Warden, the Space Armada, which patrols the edge of our solar system and poses a growing threat to the Nazi Dark Fleet. See, this is where um, they had that schism between the Dark Fleet and Solar Warden. Solar Warden was always pretty much, you could say, sponsored by the Earth Alliance, right? The White Hats, um, people that were in alignment with the Guardian races. All right, let's continue. So uh, details, Operation Paperclip, which enabled Nazis and the reptilian patterns to infiltrate the U.S. military industrial complex, including NASA and the CIA. <laughs> Figure. Reveals the interstellar spaceports in Antarctica and on Mars. Do you guys want to know why Hitler went to Antarctica first in the late 1930s, right? When he perfected his, um, his anti-gravity aircraft? called the Hanabu 1 and the Hanabu 2, was because the, the reptilians or the Dracos had already been you know, operating in Antarctica for thousands and thousands of years. And that connects to Marduk and his forces. Now, I do have a super chat. I want to acknowledge uh, Julie Kim. Thank you. Her question is, so what, happened, what happens to the newborns with the black eyes? They showed super strength from birth and had completely black eyes. Uh, there used to be videos about them. They're no longer available. Um, I heard that most of the hybrid uh, children, right, the gray human hybrids, were taken off world to a planet in Orion known as Planet Serpo. And that is planet spelled S E R P O. And it is believed that once the conditions are ripped for them to be able to live in the surface world, that they will return. So, unfortunately, a lot of humans human women, I, I would say a lot of human women out there were used as, you know, your, they were, their eggs were extracted to use as, as uh, carriers, not carriers. Yeah. Carriers of these babies, pretty much. If that makes any sense. All right. So let me continue here. Uh, Operation Paperclip, which, which enabled the Nazis and the reptilians to partner up to infiltrate the U.S. government. Okay, so we are we already know that. Reveals the interstellar spaceports in Antarctica and on Mars. The base on the moon, right? And as we know, the base of the moon, there's a reason why it's in the shape of the swastika because it was created by the Dark Fleet, the Draco-Nazi alliance. <clears throat> so it reveals that the interstellar spaceports in Antarctica and on Mars, the base on the moon and their alien technologies, including nanotechnology, anti-gravity propulsion, mass mind control, and hyperdimensional teleportation capabilities, shares testimonies from American and British super soldiers who participated in the 20-year back regression programs, revealing advanced human technology and our space armada that constitutes a counterbalance to the Nazi dark fleet. This is an interesting article. I wonder if there's anything else on the Dark Fleet. There's really not much out there, just general information. Let's see. Let's 
Okay, so from what, what I've gathered over the years is that um, the breakaway group civilizations have always existed from the beginning of time, you know. In fact, I've mentioned this before, and I'll mention it again. The Earth, uh, as it originated in Lyra, right, this Earth is the third Earth Grand Experiment. For those that have read my book, the first Earth Grand Experiment, which was the Earth that existed 560 million years ago in Lyra, um, unfortunately failed. And then that Earth reincarnated into the second Earth known as planet Avion in the Pleiades. Uh, unfortunately, due to the galactic wars that took place in the Pleiades star system, again, the refugees of many of those uh, worlds, you know, were leaving the Pleiades to seek refuge uh, in the colonization of other planets. And many believe that's how we ended up here on this planet. But the whole point is that the original breakaway groups were once part of the original Earth and Lyra. So all the different ETs out there, right, which are us in the future, right, it's all integrated. The Pleiadians are fifth dimensional versions of us. The um, uh, Andromedans are six dimensional versions of us. The Syrians are seven dimensional versions of us. The Arcturians are what, eight dimensional versions of us, or I'm sorry, the Orions. The Arcturians are ninth dimensional versions of us. Uh, the Lyrans are 10th, 11th, and 12th dimensional versions of us. It is all us, guys. It is all different versions of ourselves that are coming from the future into the now, right? Because we are at the hub. So I believe that all the different advanced civilizations out there broke away during the first Earth before it was blown up by the Draconians. And uh, many have returned. Many have returned in order to secure a um successful third earth grand experiment and that's why we're here so breakaway groups have always been the case you know not only have they broken away from the original earth and are now coming back to the third earth right as the earth reincarnated for those that have read my book this current earth was the reincarnation of tiamat earth tiamat earth existed about four million years ago and due to the mars maldekian wars the surface population of Tiamat Earth was destroyed along with Tiamat. Uh, of course, you know, a chunk of that became the asteroid belt, the hammer bracelet, and then another chunk developed into our planet. Well, the original Earth, like I said, originated in Lyra in the eighth dimension, and that was known as planet Avion. So Avion, right, the cradle of all human civilization, is where all extraterrestrial races evolved from, including all the different types of uh, variations of humanoid species out there, right? They all came from Lyra. So, and they have all returned to assist us. Now, I also want to make mention that uh, civilizations, as you guys know, have always existed here, even prior to Atlantis. So these civilizations go back to perhaps even 2 billion years ago, uh, when you want to consider the fact that even before the age of the Lemurian epoch, we had what? The age of Hyperborea, the age of Hyperborea. And even before that, we had the age of Polaria. So imagine all the breakaway groups that have literally left this planet, right? Because they have evolved spiritually, technologically, and culturally. They were able to what? Go become, you know, they were able to go to other worlds, other systems, other galaxies, right? Becoming part of a advanced colonies. Um, they all originated on this planet. In fact, that explains why this planet is the germinating ground for all civilizations within our universe, our universe. So we do have breakaway groups that exist within the earth, right? Those are known as the inner earthlings, the Agarthians, the Shambhalians, um, the Telosians, just to name a few. There are so many of them. And they're all living in peace, right? They're all just remnant survivors of ancient cataclysms, right? Of ancient wars between the reptilians and the humans, right? Which is what they call in the Bible the wars between angels and demons, right? It's just another way of uh, explaining it. So this ancient war between reptilians and humans has been going on for billions of years, apparently. So if you guys have any questions, uh, do me a favor and please put them in capital letters so that way I can just bypass the chat and go straight to the questions. So I am staying here in Naples, Florida. This is my background at the Airbnb.
The Montes. All right. Somebody has a question about the Montes. Imagine a, oh no, that's just a statement. Um, any questions, guys? I'm going to go all the way to the top to see if there was any questions in, from the beginning. If you guys could, uh, if you have a question, use capital words, capital letters, please. Somebody's saying thank you, Guardian, Guardian Alliance from uh, Janet Dean. Well, we are the Guardian Alliance. <laughs> we are the Guardian Alliance. All of us here. All right. So somebody's asking. Uh, Christine Rose is asking, "Who is Lady Athena?" Well, Lady Athena is a commander within the Guardian Alliance, representing uh, those that did not defect from the Galactic Federation of Worlds, right? Those that are still aligned with the One Infinite Creator and the forces of good. Um, she has been in instrumental in the facilitation or the rescue mission of the millions of slaves that were taken off world. So she is, some believe that she's the daughter of Zeus. Again, you know, we... The gods of mythology were no other than the extraterrestrials from advanced civilizations, guys. They are one and the same, you know. And we do have a greater potential to evolve beyond their abilities, by the way. It is within our genetics, and they know that. So Lady Athena works together with the Ashtar, uh, the Sharon Ashtar of the Ashtar Command. The good one, not the one that is coming from the Delta universe where uh, the Ashtar became evil. But uh, she's also working with Commander Kortik. Commander Kortik um, is in charge of the interplanetary communication networks, making sure that the right transmissions are coming in to this, you know, the ground crew, which is us, right? Uh, and she also works with Commander Soltik. Commander Soltik is in charge of the interplanetary geophysics department, constantly monitoring the Schumann resonance the declination of the electromagnetic field as we are getting ready to shift into the new age or into the new world. Um, and then we also have Commander uh, Sarah's Cetus Hatton. Cetus Hatton. Some call him Commander Hayton, H-A-T-T-O-N. And Commander Hayton was instrumental in the first uh, victory of the light in and around Orion, of course, before the creation of the Dark Fleet, who kind of just throw a monkey wrench in that and messed everything up. Um, so those are the different commanders that are working in alignment with the Earth Alliance, uh, Valiant Thor, and uh, all the other commanders, uh, both men and women, by the way. You know, most of the commanders are, are equal. You know, they're all just doing their own uh, part. Uh, they're, they're all equal in a sense that they all have their own duties and functions. So we do have a lot of female commanders, up, you know, that are working within the Earth Alliance or part of the Guardian Alliance, Galactic Alliance now. I'm looking for questions here. Do you, have, do you guys have any questions for me?
Thank you. Aubrey uh, Denton is saying so powerful, Ishmael. Uh, so appreciative. Love and light to you. Right back at you, my sister. Love and light to you as well. Well, somebody saying, uh, Tina Potter saying, history is past. We cannot change it as we live in the present. Well, in a sense, um, what we do in the present both affects the past and the future because it's all entangled. You know, it's not going from left to right in a linear form, the way we were taught to believe. It's all happening, in, happening simultaneously. So that's why it's important to understand this discovery through quantum physics called the quantum eraser the quantum according to the quantum eraser um every asp every part of yourself and uh, that is located on different uh, space-time coordinates has an effect on every other part of yourself right so what that means is that you as a baby affects your life as a, an adult your life as a teenager affects your life as as a you know, 80 year old, your life as an 80 year old in turn affects your life as a baby. It's all happening at the same time, guys. It's phenomenal stuff. The way reality really works. It's malleable. It's changeable, right? Justin Mercado says, thank you, Ishmael, for telling us the truth and being pure-hearted. It is an honor to serve. It is an honor to serve, guys. Thank you for the uh, likes, by the way, and for smashing the like button. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for that. Let's see. I'm looking for questions here. Golden Arrow saying, Ishmael, thank you from the mountains of Kennedy. Sending love to all who see this. Thank you. Thank you. Simone S. is saying, I do have a memory of one of my planets being destroyed where I got to see the destruction. Well, a lot of our, a lot of the past, the real history of our galaxy, guys, it's stored within our genetic blueprint, within our genes, within our DNA. We just have to access it, you know, and we will. As the veil continues to lift, right, as we continue to rise in frequency, as we continue to uh, transition to the new earth, all of these memories are going to be coming back like that. We're going to be going from limited consciousness to full awareness and consciousness of everything.
Leah Mocha says, I, I listen to you, Ishmael. I have been meditating a lot. Well, thank you for doing so. You're doing yourself a favor, and you're also helping the collective. As a reminder, my Galactic Jedis, when you guys do inner work, when you guys advance spiritually, as you guys raise your frequency, it has an effect on everyone else, right? It's called the Maharishi effect. It has been scientifically proven. Well, Adrian Aurora is saying, at what dimensional number do we finally mature enough to stop killing each other in war? Well, that's why there's going to be a bifurcation of timelines where the good people of the earth who are no longer in that warlike mentality are going to be able to coexist on the new earth that is already here, but in a different dimension, right? We're just going to shift reality soon. And, you know, the splitting of the timelines has already began, by the way. So in that world, only the good people are going to go there, while the rest of the people who are still in that mind, uh, war, mind type of mentality, warlike mentality, I'm sorry, um, they're not going to be making the timeline shift, unfortunately for them. <laughs> Teresa uh, Kessler says that I have to say it cracks me up when Ishmael says, of course, prior to mind blowing info. <laughs> You're welcome, Teresa. You're welcome. Uh, yes, I, I, my smoke detector, uh, it's not mine. Uh, again, we're staying in somebody else's house. Um, does need new batteries. Yes, I am aware of that, but I'm only here for one more night. And then I'm off to Cape Canaveral to finalize my book tour. Cape Canaveral, right, where they have that space uh, Apollo station, I believe. It's going to be fascinating to be there in Cape Canaveral tomorrow. I'm excited. And then I'll be heading home. I am at the end of my book tour, which was a very beautiful experience. I had an opportunity to meet a lot of the Galactic Jedis out there in person, which was awesome. Had a, a chance to hear their story, their, you know, experiences. And it has been priceless to me. You know, all this is priceless. I do have to say, I've been enjoying every bit of this trip, guys. You know, meeting other like-minded people who are resonating at the same level as I am is incredible. I feel like I'm actually finally finding my true family, which, you know, is all of you. You guys are all scattered everywhere. I'm excited to eventually meet every single one of you when the great reunion takes place, right? All right, so Emanuela Operman is asking, is anything happening on December 15? Um, no, nothing is happening. From what I understand is if anything big were supposed to happen, um, it's probably going to happen after the holidays, like at the beginning of the year. You know, if anything... Uh, like I said, 2024 is a big year. I've always kind of believed and felt that. So I mean, it would be great. It would be absolutely phenomenal if the solar flash took place this month, right? But everything in divine timing, guys, everything in divine timing. Apparently, there's some karma that still needs to rebalance itself, that still needs to play out uh, before we start all over again with a clean slate.
All right, so this is a question from Erica, Energy Healer. She is asking, is there going to be any more attempts by the cabal, 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 however you want to call it, to bring fear into humanity, including what has been happening in the Middle East? And you are awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I've always believed that, and, you know, this is also revealed in a lot of the prophecies that uh, Israel is the last card. So perhaps what's going on in the Middle East is their final attempt, their last card. Because apparently Project Bluebeam, right, failed. How many people out there were predicting that Project Bluebeam was going to happen any day now or this summer or, you know, at the end of the year? They've been saying that for years. So it apparently failed. So, yeah, Israel is the last card. Neil says, I heard that the year of the rabbit ends February 10th. Well, like I said, you know, 2024. Well, I've always believed that 2024 something big was going to happen. And I actually had this premonition ever since I started writing our cosmic origin. So we'll see, Neil. I just hope you're right. I hope you're right, brother. Uh, Gravity 88 is asking me, have you ever heard of the Red Queen? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Red Queen is connected to the Dark Fleet. Um, even though her... Okay, let me explain. The Red Queen is an advanced computing AI net, uh, system that is very sentient, very self-aware, uh, that was designed by the AI overlord, the Dark Fleet, and the Nazis to pretty much monitor the star people, the star seas, all right? To monitor their power, to monitor their abilities and in a way assimilate their abilities. So from what I understand is that the Red Queen has been operational uh, deep in the underground in the Colorado airport um, with, with uh, segments of her existing in Antarctica operating uh, on base 211. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not revealing too much details. Operating on base 211 uh, in cahoots with the Dark Fleet. And this is just one aspect of herself, of her, that exists here on our planet. Another aspect of the Red Queen um, was operational in Orion, right? That's where the, the Zetas and the Greys and all the evil aliens that are all programmed, right? Computer life forms like the Greys, uh, the mind hive concept. Well, they're all connected to the Red Queen of Orion. But in 2018, the super soldiers of Solar Warden um, when they won the last battle of, of Orion, again, for the third time, by the way, it is believed that the Red Queen of, Ola of Orion was defeated in 2018, 2019, around those years. So, but as far as the Red Queen is concerned here, right, the earthly counterpart of the Red Queen, I, I think that uh, when the solar flash takes place and the splitting of the timelines takes place, I think that's when we're going to see her shift into the AI dystopian technocratic timeline where she will be one with the Antichrist, right? She's the bride of the Antichrist, you know? And perhaps when we read in the book of Revelations about the, the red dragon with the ten horns, well, that's probably the Red Queen that is working with the Antichrist. And the Antichrist... I revealed it before, and I'll reveal it again. The Antichrist is sentient, autonomous AI, which is Google. And it is in everybody's devices. It knows all things. Right? Think about it. It knows all things. It is everywhere at once through technology. Right. So the beginning stages of this AI system, sentient AI, has already been developed through Google. So, unfortunately, um, you know, uh, we're seeing the emergence of the Antichrist infrastructure. But, of course, the solar flash is going to nuke it as we go into a different timeline where it, it doesn't have an effect on us. 
And I did mention that there is a third timeline, timeline B, right? There's the A, positive ascending timeline, where there is no, you know, negative entities. Uh, there is timeline C. Timeline C is the... Um, is the technocratic AI timeline, which is going to exist for a thousand years in its own reality, separated from the timeline A. And then there's going to be timeline B, which is an in-between timeline now that is also being created where it's going to be both. You know, you're going to have Earth Terrans, you're going to have AIs, you're going to have cyborgs, you know, you're going to have um, technology, nefarious technology. While at the same time, there's going to be members of timeline A from the positive ascending Earth timeline from Harmonic Universe 2 that are going to be able to kind of step into that timeline and act like superheroes to the Earth Terrans that are existing in that timeline. So in that timeline, we're going to be witnessing the rise of the Age of Heroes. And what that means is that uh, members of the positive ascending timeline, timeline A, which is I call now A, B, and C, right? B being the middle timeline, members of of the A timeline are going to be able to come into the B timeline and act as protectors of their loved ones, whoever, you know, made the shift into the fourth density or as it's already happening as I speak. <sighs> All right. So Gloria Jimenez is asking, uh, what should we expect since we are already in the bifurcation of timelines well like i mentioned um in my reel two days ago we are beginning to integrate our multi-dimensionality so by virtue of your thoughts by virtue of the feelings that you are allowing to feel you are going to um merge with that aspect of yourself so it is happening now as i speak through our thoughts and our emotions so it is best to right now become the ideal version of yourself, right? Don't, don't um, think of it as something that's going to happen in the future. Think of it as something that's already happening so that you can align with that version of yourself and be the best version of yourself. That's the best. That's what to expect as the bifurcation of timelines takes place. <laughs> Yeah, this is what I call the um, convergence, the multiverse convergence. It happens at the end of every cosmic cycle. And the cosmic cycle has been going on for 950 billion years or so. So every time a cosmic cycle comes to an end, there all the timelines, all the infinite number of probabilities and possibilities begin collapsing into just a few. So right now we have 12, and then turn the 12 collapse into three. And at the end of the millennium, those three eventually have to collapse into one permanent timeline, which is what the Bible and other books call the final war, the final clash against evil. However, in, for a thousand years, we are going to be witnessing the age of love and light on the earth before that, you know, final battle takes place on the timeline A, of course, for those that make it into timeline A, it's going to be heaven on earth. Beautiful. So do we have um, any more questions? I am only broadcasting on YouTube today, not on all my other platforms. So I'm giving my YouTube family my undivided attention now. <clears throat> I like what Gina Bobek is saying. Gina Bobek is saying, the highest version of God in action, I wish to walk as father, mother, God walk. That is the best way to, to be, you know. Start stepping into your divinity, guys. You are the Christ. You are what everybody's expecting. Every single one of you is the Christ in the flesh. All right? Beautifully stated, sister. And it's also good to start seeing the Christ in everyone else by the way, and in everything, in animals and all living things. 
right? Let's adopt the philosophy that everything in life is sacred. The planet is sacred, right? All living things are sacred. The cosmos, everything is sacred. So Joanna is asking, Elohim, good or bad? Um, well, the original Elohim, the forces of light known as Elohim, which is plural to the many uh, celestial beings that are operating and working with the light, with the governments of the great central sun, are all positive. However, the fallen Elohim, those that rebelled against the oneness of everything, the sacredness of everything, um, are what we considered in the holy books, the fallen angels which, of course, later in the physical universe were translated as the reptilians. <laughs> Joe, Joe Piscop, Piscopo is saying, the smoke alarm has a mind of its own. <laughs> it sure does, right? <laughs> I like that. Le Lela Mucha saying, we are strong, but even stronger together. Amen. Or may I say, so be it. I heard that amen is not a good word because it uh, gives honor and praise to Amon Ra, the Egyptian god who we know was no other than Marduk. So let me rephrase that. So be it. <laughs> Michelle uh, Her Herrick is saying, Ishmael, I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow in Cape Canaveral. Likewise, sister. Likewise. I'm excited to meet more of the Galactic Jedis. Gravity88 is saying, we are a family. Yes, we are. We are the family of light. The renegades, right? The rebels that are here to destroy the inverted system from within, from within in order to bring back the original organic earth as it was and as it always will be. After all, it has been prophesied that the dark forces only gave, were allowed to have temporary control of our planet. Every, every uh, scripture talks about that. Every religion talks about that. That's one thing that all these religions have in common, by the way, is you know, there's a common thread in these prophecies. David Pixton is saying, what would you say is the fastest and best way to contact your higher self? By letting go of all earthly attachments. Have no desire. You know, that's the best way. And then, of course, through meditation. Alone time. You have to establish at least 20 to 30 minutes a day and give that time to source, to God. That's the best way to establish a, con a connection with your higher self. Now, we do have a super chat from Gloria Jimenez. Thank you, sister. Brother, according to my cell phone, this life was over an hour, but yet I am still seeing it on my desktop. Uh, yes, it's been an hour and 30 minutes, and the only reason I'm going to give you guys two hours of my time is because due to my book tour, I haven't been able to go live lately as much. I know, you know, there's times where I go live uh, through broadcasting my events, but it's not the same as when it's just me and you guys here, you know, interacting. So I thought that I'd give you guys at least two hours of my time because I haven't been able to go live like this in a while. That's why I'm here. Uh, Victoria Donay, thank you so much for the donation. Do you have a question, sister? No question. Thank you so much for being here and for the number one. I appreciate it. I'm drinking eternal alkaline water. Not necessarily 
from a glass bottle the way I prefer it, but this is all I have here. It's not like I could travel with my <laughs> glass bottles, right? Mountain spring water through the airport. So I have to just deal with what I got. <laughs> Um, somebody asked me if I answer questions. Well, that's what I've been doing for the last 40 minutes. I am answering questions. So what I'm doing is I'm actually going through the entire chat. So that way I could answer as many questions as I get to, to give everybody an equal opportunity. Thank you so much for the love, for smashing that like button. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Serena Smith says, thank you, Ishmael. Your live show rocks. Oh, you're welcome, sister. The Draco Queen has um, a question. And her question is, is a Draco Queen? Uh, what's up, defeated when? Was what? What? I can't even read that. Was she, she defeated when? Was she defeated when? Oh, you're talking about the, the, the Red Queen. Okay. The Red Queen in Orion was defeated in 2018. That's when um, the super soldiers of Sword of Warden were able to cut her head off. So that's when we won the victory in the galaxy for the third time. To answer your question, sister. And it's funny that as soon as we cut her head off in Orion, Queen Elizabeth II happened to die. <laughs> right? Like a year later. I think it was in 2020 when she passed. Or 2021. Mm. That's interesting. Maybe there's a correlation there. Somebody's asking, uh, Marina's asking, what's the real meaning of the Halls of Amenti? Is it a portal? Absolutely. Yes, it is a portal that is activated by members of the original 12th strand DNA Terranusian orphan race, whose descendants are the star seeds, by the way. You guys are part of the portals. You guys are the portal, by the way. It's not just specific locations on planet Earth. It is within your etheric body. It is your chakras that are also portals that help to activate the 12 uh, meridian time warps, also known as the 12 stargates. And I believe that the main one is located at the core of the Earth. That's why they call it the Halls of Amenti. It is, it is the um, portals or the stargates that eventually connect the earth, right, to all her 12-dimensional selves, all the way to the Aramatena version of the earth existing in the 12th dimension, which is where we're heading, by the way. Cosmic goddesses, I passed over her super chat. Let's see, where is it at, cosmic goddess? I'm going to try to find it. I didn't, not by intent, by the way. See if I could find Cosmic Goddesses Super Chat. Gloria Jimenez. There is Trinity. Uh, okay, tr just to answer this one, Trinity, thank you for the donation. She says, what kind of superpowers are we going to have? Uh, for starters, we're going to have telekinesis. We're going to have telepathy. We're going to have uh, telemetry. Uh, we're going to be able to, um, some of us are going to be able to harness the power of the elements, uh, like Storm and Star in um, X-Men. Uh, some of us are going to be able to teleport. Um, everyone's going to have different gifts. So imagine all the powers, all the superpowers that we watch when we watch X-Men, Marvel, DC. That's an example of some of our powers, by the way. In fact, I've always believed, and I'll say it again, that those comics were written by insiders in preparation for the Age of Heroes. All right, so I'm looking for Cosmic Goddess's uh, super chat. I didn't mean to pass it, but I am going to do my best to find it. So I am rewinding it all the way to the top to see if I could find it.
Uh, Glory Jimenez has it. Uh, I've already answered that one. Victory Dene. I'm looking for a cosmic goddess. Uh huh. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find your super chat. Do you might? Do you want to rewrite it? Hmm. Okay, so Victor Victoria Dean is asking, will there be World War Three? Absolutely not. Not allowed at all. It's not going to happen. You know how many times these psychopaths have tried to destroy the surface world where they hide in their underground bunkers? Multiple times. I can't even count it with my fingers. The Galactics have been intervening ever since. By the way, there will be no nuclear war. And that's a fact. Thank you, Lynn, Lynn P., for your wonderful donation. And thank you, Jimmy W., for your wonderful donation. And your question is, blessings, Brother Ishmael, and all the Galactic Jedis. May God's love and light shine upon us all. So be it. So be it. I agree. Sassy Cindy says, no more wars, no more wars, sister. As far as like major wars, mm -mm. you know, the last conflict in Israel is the final conflict, by the way. Oh, Cosmo Girl says she had a super chat too. Um, I don't, I'm not seeing the super chats. Huh, that's interesting. Why am I not seeing those super chats? Let me see. Uh, I'm going to see if I can find them. Okay. I, I'm, I went all the way to the top. And I'm scrolling down slowly. Uh, the only one I see is Trinity. Um, Gloria Jimenez. Victoria Donny. Uh, two by D Victoria Donny. And Lynn. And Jimmy W. That's it. Uh, oh, Irana, thank you so much for uh, your super chat. But yeah, Cosmo Girl um, and the other, what was it, Cosmic Goddess, I, I don't know what happened to your super chats. You guys could always retype your question. So my sister, Irana Fainer, thank you so much for being here. She is taking my online course, Starseed Cosmology. By the way, uh, dear Ishmael, thank you so much for being always here for us. You're welcome, sister. Have a great time at Cape Canaveral, Cape Carnival, I call it, <laughs> uh, and safe flight home. Oh, a lot of love. Likewise, sister, thank you. Thank you for that blessing. Let's see. Yeah, I don't see any more super chats. Hmm. All right, so I'm just going to take random questions. Uh, I don't know where those super chats are, Cosmo Girl and Cosmic Goddess. Oh, there we go. Here's a question from Cosmic Goddess. Will we be taller after Ascension? Absolutely. Any new intel on timeline split? Okay, so to answer the first part of your question, yes. As we develop the other 10 strands of DNA, men are going to be anywhere from 6 foot to 7 feet tall. And women are going to go anywhere from six. Uh, they're going to be at least six feet tall to about six and a half feet tall. So we are going to be larger in, in physical status. Um, however, if we ascend to harmonic universe three, which is dimension seven, eight, and nine, we're going to be assembling 24 strands of DNA, which is going to allow us to be up to 12 to 14 feet tall. So the higher, the more strands, the more genetic material we begin to use, the taller we become. So yes, we are going to be taller in the new earth. And also the new earth is going to be three or four times bigger as it was during the days of Tiamat earth. It's going to go back to being that big, which is like as big as Jupiter. 
And then to answer the second part of your question, any new Intel and timeline splits? Um, again, I've said this in a live about a month ago that the current reality construct that was initiated by the uh, AI um, system that was working with Anki after the fall of Atlantis was initiated in Babel, in the times of the Babel times, Babylonian times. And that comes to an end by no later than 2030. So I'm hoping, all right, that it's way before then. I'm hoping that it's at the end of this year. I'm hoping that it's by no later than 2024. But do understand, Galactic Jedis, that we have won the war. So it was just a matter of time before we see the outcome take place here in the third dimension. So a question from Mantis Sitnam. Mantis Sitnam. She says, question, how old is hollow earth? How, how hollow, I'm sorry, how hollow is earth? And is there a central sun in there? Um, yes, it is like a honeycomb shaped cavern where you have different layers. You have inner continents, you have oceans, lakes, rivers, everything that we have in the surface world is also, um, reflected in the inner earth and at the core of the inner earth we do have an inner sun by the way so they do have blue skies they do have birds they have everything we have here in the surface world except from what i understand is that their animals are a little bit more exotic than ours right also remnant survivors from atlantean and lemurian times Twenty more minutes, guys, before I end this live. Twenty more minutes. I promised you guys two hours today, so I'm going to be here. I'm going to stick to my promise. Two hours. So we got about nine, eighteen minutes to be exact. And then I'm going to eat my acai bowl. It's staring at me over there. <laughs> All right, so uh, Jere, Amanda, Ramsey is asking, can you elaborate on the quantum financial system being based on compassion? Okay, so the QFS is a living technology made out of crystals that is connected to the new electromagnetic fields of the Earth as the Earth's frequency rises. And then in turn, it's also connected to the heartbeat of the Earth, which we call the Schumann Resonance. So it is a system that is operating from pure love and unconditional compassion. So by virtue of that, the people that have the most love in their heart, the people that are the most compassionate, the people that just want to help others are going to be receiving um, most of the wealth because in turn, they're going to use that wealth to help others as well. But in the fifth dimensional earth, there will be no economy. There will be no economy. Let me repeat that again. The quantum financial system is only going to be operational in the fourth D earth. In the fifth D earth, there will be no money. Because we're going to have the ability through the dormant DNA to replicate, to materialize at the speed of light anything we want through the power of our light body. By the way. Sylvia Vidal has a question. Thank you for your donation. Why can't one Jedi have all abilities? Does it hurt to be activated or shifted? Um, there are going to be different levels of upgrades depending on where you originated from. Uh, most of the galactic Jedis uh, volunteered from the dimensions 4, 5, and 6. A smaller number of them volunteered from dimensions 7, 8, and 9. And even a smaller group of them, which are probably only 100 individuals, came in from dimensions 10, 11, and 12. And then even a small core, which I believe are 12 or 13 individuals who are going to be the nucleus of the 144,000 council, which is already being developed through us. Um, there's about 12 to 13 individuals. So those 12 or 13 individuals are going to be the most powerful ones. They're going to have every ability because they're going to be 
operating on all 12 dimensions simultaneously. However, those that come from dimensions 7, 8, and 9, which is a harmonic universe under that, are going to have also multiple abilities, but not as powerful as you know the individuals above them. And then those that come from um, harmonic universe uh, 2, which is dimensions 4, 5, and 6, are going to have, you know, you're going to have teleporters, you're going to have telepaths, you're going to have, um, you know, telekinetics. So depending on where you came from, you're going to have access to more abilities. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense. So there's going to be different levels of superhumans. We're all not going to be having the same abilities. It is according to where we come from because that ex because that will determine how old our soul is. So the oldest of souls, right, the Brano race, the central race, which are 12 individuals, also known as the time lords and ladies, both male and female, uh, those are going to be the most powerful ones because they are the ones that are coming from Harmonic Universe 5. They are descending into human avatars, right? Only a small portion of their consciousness is anim animating and operating this avatar. Now imagine when this multidimensional integration takes place and their full consciousness comes into this avatar, they're going to have to actually decrease their vibration in order to interact with people in the 4th D Earth and in the 5 D Earth. While existing all the way to the 12th dimension. So, but eventually, as we continue ascending, um, we are going to be developing even more powers for those that are going to be going to the 50 earth, right? And they're going to have the light body activated. They're going to be telekinetic, telepathic. Their abilities are going to increase as they go into the 60 earth, 70 earth, 80 earth, all the way to the 12. The 12 is completion. The 12 is where we once again reunite with our holy Christ over self, which is everything. All your ancestors, all your descendants is what they call the oversoul, all integrated as one cosmic entity. That's when we reach the 12th dimension. That was a very good question, Sylvia. That was a very good question. Very good question. Any other questions? We got 10 minutes, guys, before we close tonight's live. We got 10 more uh, minutes. Uh, so Sarah, Seraph963 saying, can you speak on the seven heavens? Uh, that's a metaphor to describe the different realms, the seven spheres, the seven super universes. So we are part of the seven super universe, also known as the seven sphere. Uh, those are different aspects of the of the always existing realms known as the central creation or the central universe, which is equivalent to what scientists call base reality. Sherry Amanda Ramsey saying, as heavy as human life is, really think I'm going to miss it. Well, we're going to have our full memory, guys, as we ascend. We're going to still have our memories of who we were as humans. Because this is all part of the educational process. This is the reason why we didn't come in fully you know, uh, intact with all of our supernatural abilities. Because we needed to understand limitation and what it's like to experience the entire emotional spectrum from joy to happiness to depression and everything in between. So that we could understand the human condition. So that when we become activated, we begin to use our powers for good. All right. So this is a, a super chat from uh, Leonel, Leonov God. Thank you so much for the donation, sister. Hi, Ishmael. Are we going to begin meeting those in our tier or group more in person soon prior to the solar flash? Through resonance, we are attracting our tribe, guys, through our resonance. Whatever we give off, that's what we attract. So the answer to that is yes, it's already happening. All right, so we have another super chat from Seraph963. Seraph Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome, sister. Thank you so much for the wonderful donation.
Sandy. Sandy has a question, and thank you so much for the super chat. Any advice about uh, air travel? I have work travel Monday the 11th for a few days from East Coast to Seattle, Washington. I'm thinking of avoiding. Um, well, um, yeah, I wouldn't worry about anything. I wouldn't worry about anything. If things do begin to happen, it's not going to be till like March, spring equinox. So I wouldn't worry about anything in January. Because, by the way, uh, the real beginning of the year is in spring, by the way, not in January. That's right. No fear, says Joanna. Yeah, let's live our lives, guys. Like if nothing will ever, nothing wrong will ever happen. Because when we begin to fear or worry or doubt, that's when we are attracting that reality to us. So just bear in mind that your resonance, your frequency is what determines what happens to you all the time. Excuse me. Carrie Bonifacio saying thank you, Ishmael. You are so welcome, sister. All right, five more minutes, guys. Five more minutes. Sophia, are you asking if tickets are still available? Uh, yes, uh, tickets are still available to my uh, event tomorrow in Cape Canaveral. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm actually going to put that link in the description of this live. So at the end of the live, find the description to Cape Canaveral. And I believe that... Um, Tickets are still being offered if you want to come meet me in person tomorrow. <clears throat> uh, Dan Salcido saying, what are your thoughts on Henry Kissinger passing? Well... <clears throat> I believe that um, it wasn't that he was passing through natural death. I believe that he was by the White Hats at Gitmo, by the way. Carrie, um, that guy, Kissinger, I don't want to say his full name in case I'm being censored. which I probably am, but I don't care. But <laughs> in order to not avoid a strike, I believe that guy was um, even higher than Soros. So, yeah, I think that the White Hats finally hung him. So, of course, you know, the Mockingbird media is going to say that he passed away. <clears throat> so here we have a question from Flana Cavici. Do you know of Lee, Lita, Marduk, and Tiamat planets being destroyed in galactic wars? And there are any others? Do we need to heal our ancestors in this lifetime due to this trauma? Thanks. Um, well, again, when Marduk usurped control of Nibiru, he, he put himself in a position to be the defender of the earth, but he was really the dark lord that took over. And he it is believed that he wanted people to know that he slayed Tiamat. In other words, that he destroyed the original earth before it became our earth. But, um, yeah, Marduk has always been the bad guy. Uh, the reason Tiamat was destroyed was because of the reptilian infiltration of our solar system that took place uh, 2.5 million years ago. And, yes, if, if we clear, 
and heal all, all of our lives, we could also begin the healing of our ancestral trauma. In fact, our ancestors are all counting on us to do the work, right? Because this is the final incarnation, guys. That's why they're all counting on us to do the work. I'm going to take one more question. One more question. Let's see. Sandy. Sandy has a question. Thank you for your generous donation. She says, please scroll up and read two questions. Um, two questions, rations, anywhere from Teresa Reed and Cosmo Girl. Okay, I'm going to be scrolling up questions from Teresa and Cosmo Girl. Let's see. Hmm. Okay, Cosmo Girl says, well, he's kind of answering it now with another question. Um, I don't find Teresa. I don't see a question from Teresa. Hmm. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't see anything from Teresa. All right. So as we come to the finale of this live, I want to thank all the Galactic Jedis out there for participating and joining me on today's live. I will be broadcasting live tomorrow from my Cape Canaveral, Cape Carnival event. <laughs> it's a joke. From Cape Canaveral. And I believe that event starts at 5, so I'll probably be broadcasting around 6 o'clock Eastern time. Stay tuned for that. And for those that want to attend my event, the Eventbrite link will be in the description of this live. With that have said, may the God Force be with you guys always. And I will see you guys tomorrow broadcasting from Cape Canaveral. We will talk to you then. Have a wonderful evening.